Can you believe it? We finally discovered the truth. After centuries of deception, we finally figured out that our mainstream history is a lie and that much of our past is actually hidden from us. In our lifetime, we figured out that the pyramids of Giza were actually power plants, that there's a hidden chamber underneath the Sphinx, and that Gobekli Tepe predates civilization over 12,000 years. But it wasn't until recently that we also discovered something even more mind-blowing than any of that. What we discovered is that global cataclysms happen all the time, and that our last one may have been as recent as 200 years ago, right around the time of the Revolutionary War. During this period of global upheaval, secret societies like the Freemasons and the Papal State seized control of our historical timeline, skewing it in their own favor. They rewrote the history books and moved into the buildings left by the previous society, claiming them as their own. They monopolized our governments and controlled school curriculums. They poisoned our drinking water and made every effort to dumb us down. But the thing about the truth is, no matter how much you try to bury it, in the end it will always find a way to surface. In this video, we are going to lay out all the evidence, everything to date we can find, to prove the theory of Great Tartaria is a valid historical hypothesis and should be considered more highly by those in the mainstream academic community. The evidence, in my opinion, is all around us, hidden in plain sight, a unified architectural signature somehow spread all across the world, centuries before globalization, magnificent basilicas built to last forever in towns with a population of only 500 people, architects that don't exist, building timelines that don't add up, city fires everywhere, all across the U.S., somehow getting so hot that they were able to melt thousands of brick and stone buildings into piles of rubble and magma, sometimes two or three times in the same city. We are undoubtedly, in my opinion, living in the ruins of a civilization that had technology beyond our comprehension, and in this video, I am going to do my absolute best to prove it to you. Prepare yourselves for the Tartarian Empire, full theory explained. Before we begin, shout out to our sponsors on Patreon. You're all awesome and make this kind of content possible. I appreciate your support very much. I'm also on X, formerly known as Twitter, and will be on Rumble very, very soon. I also need to give a shout out, in no particular order, to some of the channels that inspired me to create the short documentary. Lucius Aurelian, My Lunch Break, and John Levi. These guys are great, and I would highly recommend you go and subscribe to their channels. Now, let's begin with the show. Buffalo, 1901. Live babies are on display in incubators at the Pan American Exposition, one of America's many World's Fair events. These infants were also on display in St. Louis in 1904, the World's Fair of Chicago of 1934, as well as many other locations. What is going on here? Why were these newborn children taken away from their mothers at birth, shipped in from hospitals all around the country to be displayed to complete strangers? What mother would agree to this? American schools will tell you that this operation was carried out by Dr. Martin Coney and that the babies were not up for adoption, but were instead displayed to show off the effectiveness of the incubator. However, this is where the mainstream narrative starts to fall apart. We are told that the mothers agreed for their children to be taken away temporarily in order to be displayed at the World's Fair hundreds of miles away. However, we have concrete proof that in many cases, these babies were actually orphans and were, in fact, up for adoption. Take a look at this newspaper article from the 1904 St. Louis World's Fair, which states, Orphans and waifs are taken care of under the roof of the incubator building until they are either adopted or placed into the bailiff's ward of an orphan's home. And these orphan babies at the World's Fair were not an independent phenomenon. The orphan trains are another well-documented piece of American history, where hundreds of thousands of orphans were shipped in by a train from urban cities to the rural countryside, and at each stop, local townspeople would gather to look at the children and decide which ones they wanted to take home. Did you ever wonder how these farm families in the Midwest got so large. So where are all these orphans coming from? And what happened to their parents? Again, this is where the mainstream narrative starts to fall apart. We are told that the orphan train movement was in response to the increasing number of orphaned, abandoned, and homeless children living in cities due to war and immigration. But this doesn't make any sense. Immigrating to a new country does not make you just suddenly abandon your children. And men dying in wars still doesn't explain what happened to the mothers and the rest of the families. So why was there actually such a spike in orphans at the turn of the century? To the point where they were auctioning them off like cattle at fairs and train stops. The Tartarian theory posits that these children were orphaned as the result of a reset, and their parents were either killed, manipulated, or declared mentally insane. 
While that may sound far-fetched at first, consider all the wars and chaos that was going on in the 17 and 1800s. There were some massive power vacuums created during this time frame, with the Napoleonic Wars going on in Europe and the Civil War going on in the US, to name a few. Is it really so far-fetched to think that history could have been manipulated by the victors of these conflicts, capitalizing on the intense socio-political turmoil caused by these wars? Also consider the fact that insane asylums were popping out of nowhere at the turn of the century. At their peak, over half a million Americans were admitted to these asylums concurrently. That's over 1% of the total U.S. population at the time. Why were so many people losing their minds all at once? Could it have really been that we went through a reset and these asylums were made for those who remembered the truth about our past or refused to comply with the new timeline? It is well cited that individuals were often admitted to these asylums against their wills and once inside were treated cruelly, subjected to solitary confinement, hypnosis, experimental medications, and in many cases were even forcibly lobotomized. And if you thought all that was crazy, just wait until we get to the next segment. Are you ready to have your mind blown? We're back at the World's Fair, this time St. Louis, 1904. We are told that all these buildings were temporary structures, created hastily in less than a year for these World's Fair events. But what if that's not true, and these buildings were already here in the first place? That is what I believe is the case. You can believe whatever you want, but the evidence is right here, plain as day, in my opinion. We had beautiful architecture in the United States, all over the country, in every state capital, every church, cathedral, and basilica, we had downtown areas that rivaled Rome and Paris. We had immaculate structures from the old world, all over the nation. But they didn't fit in with the timeline our controllers wanted to impose. So they destroyed them, replaced their cornerstones, or adjusted their dates of construction to better fit the narrative they sought to establish. They took over the school systems through the Rockefeller initiatives and taught us only the history they wanted us to know. They knew that if they could embed their narrative in us young enough, that we wouldn't question it when we get older, because it would be too mind-shattering to comprehend. But there is an awakening coming. You, the viewer, who are brave enough to consider these ideas and to spread them. The tides will shift, and the controllers will inevitably lose their grip. When the time comes, will you be ready to embrace virtue and enlightenment? Here we are again, this time in Chicago, 1893, the Columbian Exposition. We are again told that these buildings were temporary structures and were knocked down shortly after the fair ended, but this is not the case. These structures were here before. This entire downtown area had been around for thousands of years. We had glory in old Chicago, and our controllers destroyed it to enrich themselves. And we know that these buildings were not actually temporary, because some of them still stand today. But many of these buildings were purged, making way for a new era of deception and control. But why, one might ask, would such a grand past be hidden? Well, it's very simple, actually. He who controls the past controls the future. By rewriting history, those in power can create a narrative that serves their own interests, one that downplays or erases the achievements of previous eras to make the present seem more advanced, more enlightened. But this theory is not just about buildings. It's about the very essence of history itself. It's about who gets to write that history and what they choose to include or exclude. It's about understanding that history as we know it is often a story told by the victors, by those who have the power to influence what is remembered, and most importantly, what is forgotten. These structures were built by a previous civilization and the World's Fair was a cover-up to destroy them, to erase our history, withhold technology, and monopolize our world for their own profit. Our eyes are open now. We know now what they did to our past. And in the next segment, we're going to find out what our controllers did to Grand Tartaria. Have you ever seen these old maps that depict Tartaria on them? as the preeminent power of Eurasia and the Middle East. Have you ever seen this book by Henry Kissinger that has Tartaria right on the cover, directly in the center of the main page? What about this declassified CIA document which discusses Tartaria and the manipulation of its history? Can you believe that they tried to erase the history of an entire civilization, one that undoubtedly had significant influence on global society? 
an entire empire covered up by our controllers. Where was our lesson about Tartaria in grade school? Well, we didn't have one. And that's because the Rockefellers bought out the public school system to teach us only the history they wanted us to know. Tartaria was an empire, and its symbol was a griffin or a wyvern. This is well documented in old posters and photographs. What's more is we see on the Russian imperial flag a griffin or wyvern being stabbed by St. George on a horse, a clear metaphor for the Papal State's victory over Tartaria. Again, you can believe whatever you want to believe, but to me, this is clear evidence that we are being lied to and manipulated. What was the Tartarian Empire, and why did they want to cover it up so badly? This theory posits that the Tartarians possessed a technology that our controllers do not want us to know about. This hidden knowledge, according to some researchers, is deeply embedded into the architectural marvels attributed to Tartaria, particularly in the construction of old world churches. These structures, built primarily from stone with slate roofs, were not only designed to stand the test of time, but also, it is believed, to harness and utilize unique vibrational energies. One key aspect of this architectural ingenuity lies in the concept of resonance frequencies encoded into the stained glass windows, the pipe organs, the bell towers and spires on top of these churches and cathedrals. It is theorized that these builders had an advanced understanding of how sound frequencies could influence both matter and consciousness. Bell towers of these churches, often seen as mere religious symbols, might have played a crucial role in this context. By tuning the bells to specific frequencies, it is speculated that these towers could generate resonant vibrations capable of producing various beneficial effects, ranging from healing to enhancing spiritual experiences. Furthermore, the use of sacred geometry in the design of these structures is another intriguing element. Sacred geometry, a concept found in various ancient civilizations, involves the use of particular geometric proportions and shapes believed to embody a deeper spiritual significance. In the context of Tartarian architecture, these geometric principles could have been applied to align the buildings with cosmic energies or ley lines, thereby magnifying their supposed energetic properties. The durability and longevity of these constructions are also noteworthy. The choice of materials, stone and slate, was not arbitrary. Stone, with its dense and stable structure, is an excellent medium for conducting and storing vibrational energies. Meanwhile, slate roofs, beyond their practical weather-resistant qualities, might have been chosen for their potential to interact with electromagnetic fields, a concept not fully understood in modern times. In piecing together this puzzle, one cannot help but wonder about the true extent of the knowledge possessed by the Tartarians. If indeed these theories hold any truth, the implications are profound. Not only would it mean that our understanding of history is incomplete, but it also points to the existence of a forgotten technology, one that harmonized architectural mastery with the subtle energies of the natural world. The suppression of such knowledge could be seen as an attempt to maintain control over technological narratives and by extension over society itself. As we continue to unravel the mysteries of the past, it becomes increasingly clear that history is not always as straightforward as it is presented. The legacy of the Tartarian Empire, shrouded in obscurity and speculation, challenges us to look beyond conventional narratives and consider the possibilities of a lost, advanced civilization. New York, Chicago, San Francisco, Boston, Baltimore, Portland, Atlanta, Seattle, St. Louis, Pittsburgh, Savannah, Charleston, Detroit, Rochester, Cincinnati, Nashville, Milwaukee, Omaha. How did every single city across America manage to burn to the ground within one century? This makes no sense at all. The buildings of this era were mostly made out of stone and steel. Our buildings today are made out of wood and plaster. When is the last time you heard of an entire city melting to ashes? What about just an entire neighborhood? I bet you never have because it simply does not happen. The truth is, these were not accidental fires that destroyed these cities. The cause was not a cow that tipped over a lantern in a barn. This was a deliberate attack. What do you see when you look at these pictures? Do you see the aftermath of a fire or something more? Is there something we are not being told? Well, of course there is. We've been lied to for centuries in order to cover up the truth. Our past was more glorious than anyone ever knew, and it has been kept from us until now. 
2024 will mark an age of reawakening where the people of this planet will finally begin to understand what needs to be done in order to restore the world. In order to achieve enlightenment, restore the old world technology, and bring about a new renaissance, we need to work together to study cymatics, sacred geometry, wireless electricity, and never ask for a cent of profit. I hereby dedicate my life to the research and rediscovery of the old world technology, and I know that, in the end, we will achieve our goal. We will study the Egyptians, the Tartarians, the ancient Sumerians, and others who have been given the seeds of knowledge in the past, and we will, once again, cast off our chains. Humanity will no longer be held back by controllers who wish to profit at our expense. We will no longer be slaves to a system of deception and greed. We will restore the world to a state of enlightenment and virtue, and we will ascend to heights never before dreamed. The controllers want us to believe that these immaculate structures were built in less than a year in towns with a population under a thousand. These are just a few examples. Find any cathedral in America that was supposedly built in the 1800s. You will find the fire narrative in every single one of them. You will find ridiculous building time frames of oftentimes less than a year. You will find architects and building companies that do not exist, and you will know the truth. But be warned, once you have eyes to see, you will never go back. You will never look at these buildings the same way, and you will realize that you were destined for so much more than what we've been told. Imagine for a moment that you held the keys of knowledge that you knew how to create unlimited energy, heal the sick without medication, and bring about spiritual awakening in humans. Would you give that knowledge away all for free? Or would you consolidate that power, enslave the masses, and profit off the results? This theory posits that there is a war between good and evil, but not just a physical war, a war for our minds and for our souls. By resetting our history, our controllers attempted to conceal the truth about our past because they know that the truth will set us free, and that once the truth comes to light, it spreads like wildfire until change is inevitable. That is why when you look at the symbol of the papal state, it contains two keys with crosses carved into them. They did not invent the cross. The cross is already here, and they assumed control of it. They hold the keys to the secrets of the star forts and the keyholes found all across the world, a unified architectural signature found all across the world during a time period where we are taught there was no global society and minimal communication between these different cultures. It is also clear, looking at some of these old world buildings, that they underwent some sort of mud flood or cataclysm that buried much of the structure. That's why in so many of these old world buildings, you will find windows and doorways built underground and tunnel systems connecting many of these buildings together. The existence of these underground structures and tunnel systems challenge the mainstream narrative of history. These remnants suggest a highly advanced civilization once thrived, possessing knowledge and technology far beyond our current understanding. The mud flood or cataclysm that buried these structures could have been a deliberate act to erase this advanced civilization from our collective memory. It raises questions about who orchestrated such an event and why. Moreover, the widespread nature of these architectural similarities hints at a global society that was interconnected in ways we cannot fathom today. The idea that such a society existed during a time period we believe was marked by isolation and minimal global communication is both intriguing and unsettling. It implies that our history has been deliberately altered or obscured, leading us to underestimate the capabilities and achievements of our ancestors. If indeed there was a global society with advanced technology and knowledge, what happened to it? Did it fall victim to natural disasters, or was there a more sinister force at play? And what about the knowledge and technology they possessed? It's plausible that this knowledge was not completely lost, but rather hoarded and hidden by a select few. These gatekeepers, symbolized by the keys of the papal state, could have been the ones who decided the fate of this knowledge, whether to use it for the betterment of humanity or for controlling and subjugating the masses. The truth about our past is not just a matter of historical interest. It has profound implications for our present and future. If we can uncover and understand the secrets of this ancient civilization, we might be able to solve many of the challenges we face today, including energy scarcity, health crises, and spiritual malaise. In conclusion, the symbols, architectural remnants, and historical anomalies point towards a hidden chapter of human history. Unraveling this mystery 
could be key to unlocking our full potential as a species. It is imperative that we question the narrative presented to us, seek the truth, and use it to create a better world for all. I know I just threw a lot of information at you guys, and if this is the first time you are hearing about the Tartarian theory, I don't expect you to understand everything at first. In fact, none of us truly know for certain what the mysteries of our past hold, and it's impossible to cover everything in just one video, especially because more and more discoveries are being unearthed every day with the continued rise of the internet and artificial intelligence. On your screen now are some topics that I did not cover in today's video, but please let me know in the comment section below which subjects you would like to see covered next. I do believe that through prayer and positive visualization, coupled with our real-world efforts, we can eventually rediscover and even reverse engineer the ancient technologies that once were. In pursuing this quest, we must proceed with caution and awareness, recognizing the immense power of this knowledge. It's akin to a double-edged sword, capable of being wielded for benevolent purposes or malevolent ends alike. This is why it's imperative that we maintain a balance of wonder and responsibility, ensuring that our discoveries are harnessed for the greater good of humanity in mind, and that we conduct ourselves with integrity and wisdom in this pursuit. In light of this, the remainder of this video will serve as a repository for the Tartaria subreddit. I've noticed an increasing influx of skeptics on the site, and there's a growing concern that this rich collection of theories and discussions might one day face permanent closure. I hope I am wrong but I do feel that our days on this subreddit may be numbered. Contribute while you can. Thank you for watching, everybody. God bless.